Listen up, beautiful people. I want to take just a minute to tell you about our new hosting site, Anchor. Anchor is your one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. So go to anchor.fm slash start and become part of the Anchor community today. And now, back to the show. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful people. Hey, we've had a good week in Memphis. This has been fun. We're now part of the party, the big party. And um, it's great having a professional soccer team in town, got to tell you. We're going to talk to Clayton France probably once a week, probably. Calling this segment The Hit List, it's all the things that you need to know about Bluff City Mafia Supporters Group. And we're talking to co-president and one of the capos, Clayton France, about that. And, uh, you know, just just about Bluff City Mafia in general. So if you are in Bluff City Mafia, want to be a part of Bluff City Mafia, or are trying to figure out what makes this thing tick, then the hit list is the weekly segment for you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the 901 Soccer Podcast. Yo, <laughs> and we're live. Are you rowing in a rowboat or popping popcorn? <laughs> I am. I'm feeding the dog. <laughs> okay. All right. That's that's a good thing to do. Yeah. I, I guess you. Know, I don't realize how loud these headphones are. Like. Oh yeah. Until I like start talking to somebody and they go, "Hey, what are you doing?" <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave that in. Look, everybody right. can relate to that, right? Right, right. Sometimes you know, when, sometimes when you're talking on the phone with your friends, you gotta do other stuff, right? Right. Life right. doesn't stop just because we have a pro soccer team now. I, I wish it did. You know, I wish that on Sunday morning I did not have to get up and worry about anything other than pro soccer. <laughs> that is not the case, my friend. No, it's I not. Am, I am flying up get well right now, and I'll tell you why later. Okay. A lot has happened since we last talked on the phone, man. I'm just saying. In the in the four or five minutes since we've talked on the phone? That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Because my wife needed me to do something, and I am now flying up get well at a greatly accelerated pace at, at an alarming rate <laughs> at an alarming rate yes that's great yeah. but enough about us let's talk about you uh your life has changed in the last week or so uh i would venture to say you have gotten an education in this last week um i'll give the folks a summary Memphis 901 FC played their first match in club history. They did not get the win. Uh, it was a massive win for the club, for the front office, and for the owners, I dare say. Uh, but more than that, what the, the people of Memphis are talking about Bluff City Mafia. It has gotten the attention of the general traditional American sports fan and people are like what on earth is going on at this soccer game thing <laughs> yeah I, uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't even know we had a soccer team and that's right, all anybody's right. talking about right right so soccer yeah it's a comedy <laughs> sport yeah soccer yeah sports why, why is this on my radio? I am just trying to go to Cracker Barrel for lunch, and these folks are talking about soccer on right. radio. Right, right. It's a, uh, it's been a, it's been an interesting week. That's that's uh for sure to say. Um, I can't go through my office now without people telling me 
that they've seen my picture or they see my face on the news or, you know, somewhere on social media. Um, and they can't, you know, the, and then the first thing out of their mouth is what is bluff city mafia? And so I get to, you know, I get to, t- I get to have this conversation probably five or six times a day right now. Um, which is fun. It's a lot of fun to talk about soccer with people, but especially people that don't understand soccer. Um, it's more fun to talk about people who do understand it because you actually talk about things. Uh, but it's been it's been an it's been an interesting, you know, few days for me. Yeah. Um, and and I wouldn't say it's just me. I would say it's Bluff City Mafia as a whole. You know, we've gotten a lot of national attention um, that we were not expecting to get. We've gotten the attention of a lot of other supporter group that, um, you know, both good and bad. Um, so it's interesting to deal with that and and kind of get some of the some of the heat, I guess, that comes with, you know, being a supporters group that was as successful as we were in that first night. Um, but it's been it's been it has it's been interesting. Well, so, OK, so uh, just for, you know, people who aren't in the area, um you appeared on the Sports 56 Midday Show, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, Coach Mulch has been all over the place, just out in the media and, you know, like at TV stations, taking players with him. He's been to city council. And right. Like, like soccer just seemingly right now is kind of uh, taking over Memphis. I know that sounds so weird. Maybe taking over is not the right word. It is getting attention in a way that soccer has never gotten attention, at least since 1980, which is a really long time ago. Right, right. I think you're right. I think that this has been, you know, and it's interesting because the night that we played, you know, was senior night for the Tigers. Um, It was the first weekend of spring break. And we still drew 81,000 people at the game. Yeah. So Shelby 80, County. Yeah, 8,100. Sorry, not 81,000. But Shelby yes. County, DeSoto County, Germantown, and Collierville were all on spring break. And there may have been more. But all of those places were on spring break. People were traveling. We still drew 8,000. I mean, that's amazing. Right, right. And, and it is. It's incredible. And then, like I said, the Tigers playing, you know, senior night. Um, yeah. You know, especially with the season that they've had and, and the hype that's been around Penny Hardaway and stuff. You know, it's been a, that's been an interesting. I was interested to see how those two would co-mingle, um, you know, with overlapping weekends. And I was not, I was not unimpressed with how they did. Right. Um, you know, I was pleasantly surprised to see the the amount of people that we drew. And then, I mean, and even like this coming up weekend, it will be interesting because if Memphis makes it to Saturday. I mean the a the you know, the American Athletic Tournament is in our backyard. Right, that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, so that will also be interesting to see, you know, yeah. how that affects this weekend. It uh, it is it it is is going to be interesting. So I have now uh, I've done uh, well I've watched the Pete Pranica and JJ Greer broadcast all the way through twice, and I got to tell you. Uh, Bluff City Mafia can be heard consistently throughout the night, uh, very loud. There were tweets that were coming in even during the game that said something along the lines of, well, the best part of the best part of the night was seeing uh, Bluff City or the best part of the night was hearing Bluff City Mafia uh, somewhere around fourth and Danny Thomas. Now that's amazing. Like they could hear the drums. At fourth than Danny Thomas, which is, right. you know, uh, pretty great. And then the other thing that was really, really cool about the, uh, the, the night is that the players and coaches, when they gave post-match interviews, talked about the atmosphere and the crowd. And I will I'll tell you, you already know this because we've had these discussions, but other people need to know this. There were, there were soccer people in this town – who, who, uh, who said something along the effect, uh, something to the effect of, well, I don't know if we want our kids around those drunken hooligans talking about Rogue Squadron in the old Memphis City days. Right. And those exact same people have told me this week, man, 
Bluff City Mafia was incredible. That was a lot of fun, and the atmosphere was really, really great. So, uh, you know, now all of a sudden we're not drunken hooligans. We are, you know, normal, upstanding citizens of this community <laughs> who are providing a great atmosphere for something in Memphis. But the best comment of all, and I wish I'd give credit if I knew who said this, uh, when, on Twitter, when they showed the video of you and Parks uh, and everybody, I don't know, Gabe, I don't know who all had a smoke grenade. I just know that I was in between all of the people who did have the smoke grenades. But when you popped the smoke, the drums were going, there was loud singing, and someone tweeted, that kind of behavior would get you arrested at the forum. Right, right. And, yeah. and it's <laughs> basket, basketball crowds, they're not used to this, man. And, no, they're not. Oh, it's great. And the baseball people who work at the park aren't used to it either. But I've had, you know, a few comments of people just kind of tweeting us, hey, love the atmosphere. Been working down at the park for years. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. And, and that's one of those things that, you know, I told people going into this weekend, you know, when, when we started Bluff City Mafia, it was we just want to be we just want to be loud you know, raucous and make it hell for the opposing teams for 90 minutes, you know, and that's what we did. And that's, you know, I was, I was proud of everybody in Bluff City Mafia. It was bigger than I ever expected it to be, especially for game one. Um, you know, our people sang for 90 minutes, they sang hard for 90 minutes. They were loud. Um, and I even got told at one point that, like the players could not hear Mulqueen on the bench, like like literally four feet from the coach, and you can't hear him talk yeah. um, because we were that loud. So a couple of uh, a couple of quick other things. Uh, one is um, the the Olay chance. I think you noticed started every single time there was like a break between songs. There were some guys who were very accustomed to Olay chants at soccer matches up yeah. behind us. And, man, those guys were a lot of fun. But I, it was kind of something that I got to admit, I wasn't expecting. It was not something that we planned for. It just sort of happened. No, and I think that's the best part about doing stuff like this is, you know, things are going to happen in the game that you can't plan for, you don't expect. Um, and you have to react to them. And letting the guy, you know, having the guys be behind us because when you're sitting there for the game, you know, you want, yes, you want to consistently sing for 90 minutes, but unless you have like a set song list or, you know, schedule, yeah. there's going to be points where you kind of look at each other and go, okay, what do we sing next? What is, <laughs> right. what is the feel of the game? Yeah. Um, and that happened a couple times where, you know, Parks and I were just kind of trying to fill out the stadium and fill out the game and, and get ready for our next song. And all of a sudden I hear, you know, the Olay chant start. And I'm like, that's fine. We can just, we can let this roll for a little bit. Go with it. Go with it. Just yeah. go with it, man. People because want the to nice part it, is, is go with it. The nice part is the Olay chant is not one that I have to get up there and start, you know, yelling through a megaphone for it. It can actually give me and Parks a few minutes of like a break um, right. just for our voices and stuff. Uh, but no, it was perfect. I mean, the atmosphere was everything we wanted it to be. It was, you know, the players have definitely recognized everything that happened. Um, you know, the club has come to us and said that it was, you know, that they appreciate everything that we did and we have a long way to go still, um, you know, getting some chance ironed out and getting some people on the same tune and stuff. Um, but no, we're definitely excited about the future and I think we're headed in the right direction for sure. Yeah, and and the other thing that I think was completely spontaneous and we didn't plan for at all and and we, to be fair, we've been talking about this for so many, like months and months and months. But one of the things that you and Park said from the very get go is, "We're not doing the Viking clap." No. And then, like the when For the Culture got up there, it was so great to have those guys. And if you haven't listened to our For the Culture pod, it was amazing. So you got to go check those guys out. Um, they're just cool. And uh, that's a big thing in Atlanta. The the ATL clap is a big thing. Right. So they, they did that and they did We Ready. And both of those things, it was like, 
Bluff City Mafia at that moment was was ready for anything. They were so – it was the end of the game. Everybody was so pumped up. There were more and more and more people kind of cramming towards the front, and it was just like – you guys just went with it and allowed it to happen. And both of you are to be commended for that because you could have said, wait a second, this isn't according to our plan. And the result was everybody down the first base side on the other side of the stadium started doing the, not everybody, but tons of people. Uh, I didn't realize how, what, what, how many it was until I saw it on TV. Tons of people were doing the 901 clap. Right. And now all of a sudden, you've got a thing that has grown organically that you didn't plan for. Yeah. And it's, it's, it goes along the same lines, the OLA thing. It's, we kind of, you know, you don't want to fight what's happening, especially if it's working. Um, you know, we can sit here and plan and write as many chances as we want to, but if they don't take off and you keep trying to force it, then it doesn't work. You know, it's, you're just wasting your time. And so for us to have essentially now two chance that, we were never going to use, we had not even, you know, we had almost kind of, we, well, we had, we had outlawed the nine on one clap. We said, we're not doing this because it was just, you know, it's being used by everybody. Um, and yeah, it's dying down a little though. Right. And we're still going to put a Memphis spin on it. You know, we did do it. We did do it a little bit different than the Atlanta version, um, which I liked, uh, you know, and, and having the song, we ready do that. That's probably something that we'll keep as well. Cause we kind of, we kind of were looking for something for like player walkouts and stuff like that. So that, that works out well for us. Um, so, I mean, it definitely, it's definitely something that, like I said, if, if it happens organically and it works, you know, why, why get rid of it? There's no point to get rid of it. Yeah. You're just fighting, you're fighting the flow and that's just, and that's a waste of time. So, so I'm, I've been debating on whether or not – I don't want to get any Twitter wars started back up. I really don't. But, man, you've seen it. I've got a clip of Miss Ruby where our drummers were killing it. Right. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. Our, here's the thing. Here's I, the thing. Our drums – I just want to go on the record. Our drums killed it for 90 yeah. minutes of that game. So one thing I'm always going to do is stick up for our drummers. We had a, you know, we've had to defend our guys on Twitter this weekend and stuff uh, just for a, a video that got put out by USL that, you know, showed a bad transition between songs and stuff and people jumped on it. And that's really, I think people just, people didn't want to see us be successful in week one. And, but like I said, at the end of the day, they're, you know, Bluff City Mafia is going to stick up for its people and we're going to defend everybody that we can, that we need to defend. So. Yeah, you know, um, and we ended up fourth on the attendance thing for this week. Now, do we expect that to hold? No, that's kind of ridiculous. Everybody wants to come out to the start of something and something new, right? But we, what we do expect it to be something that I think is far more sustainable than you and I could have imagined three years ago. Is that fair? Right, right. I definitely think that, you know, given the, given the struggles that we saw at the NPSL level to get attendance – you know, to have, I mean, think about this. The highest game we ever had in the NPSL was playing Chattanooga, and they brought 100 people themselves. Right, and we had about 800 you know, there that night. Right, and so, I mean, we sold, the club is, like, Bluff City Mafia section alone has almost five or, like, 500 season ticket holders. Yeah, which, is, know, about, which is about an average game, you know, for, for, uh, Right, you know, for, for, yeah. for the, for the, for the so, whole entire thing. Yeah, all so just it. alone in the supporter section, we have, you know, that. So, I mean, I definitely think that this is – I don't think sustainability is going to be an issue. I think that the game sells itself. It's not like – you know, it's not like baseball where you have to kind of do gimmicks and stuff to get people to come out to the games. And, you know, basketball is – yes, it's a basketball city – but basketball is really only exciting for about two to three minutes of a game, you know. Um, and and football is football, but that's not a, a big deal because it's out of season anyway. Yeah, it's out of season. I mean, most of the time we, we'll we'll deal with some maybe overlaps with Tiger football in the fall. But we really did well against the opener of the Tiger football game on uh, f- Tiger football season. On 901 day, it's a different audience, right? And for right. the most part, I mean, there's going to be overlap between 
soccer in all sports, but I couldn't believe the number of people. I was excited about the number of people who had never been to AutoZone Park. And we're just like, huh, I've never been here before. This is a pretty nice stadium. Right. I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be the key this year is can you keep, you know, you know that your season ticket holders are going to be at most of the games, you know, you know, if they have to miss a couple, then so be it. But, you know, because 17 games, I mean, 17 games is a lot to ask of people. It's a lot. People have, you know, life goes on like we talked about. It doesn't stop right. just because you've got a pro soccer team. Right. But, I mean, you know, 17 games is quite a bit to ask. But I think that if you average – if Memphis averages, you know, 5,500 a game this season, I'll call that a win. Yeah. And I don't think that that's a big ask. I think that – I think because I think season tickets are, you know – I think there are like half of that or more than half of that already in season tickets. Yeah. So it's, you know, how do you get the rest of the people out of there? And that's what Bluff City Mafia has to do is get, you know, Bluff City Mafia has to create an atmosphere that people want to be at the ballpark and people want to be at the stadium to watch. Absolutely. No question about it. I think that's so, a big part of it. And I think if we, I think if we do like we did this past weekend going forward, it's, that won't be an issue. Right. Yeah, we've seen, you know, uh, example after example of, say, a friend of like people in Bluff City Mafia asking their friends, hey, man, please just come go to the game with me. And they're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It's soccer. I don't like soccer, blah, blah, blah. And then they come and they start, they start tweeting, this is, the, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in sports. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, Malia called me. <laughs> I know, man. This is what happens. Hey, that's what – look, I'm telling you, this is the repeating theme in this episode yeah. is that life goes on. Eventually, just we're going to get the – eventually, we'll get to finish this podcast. <laughs> look, just because we have a pro soccer team now does not mean that life stops, and that's exactly why I just look like I did a drug deal at Gary's Meat Market. Right, right. I didn't do a drug deal. For the record, I didn't do a drug deal. At, I was just giving my mother-in-law her purse, but it looked like I was doing a drug deal in the parking lot of Gary's Meat Market. So I mean, Gary's Meat Market is a sketchy place. You know. You know. You know. Some, some would say so. Others, other other people would say it's the only place where you can get a nice whole hog for eighty-six cents a pound. Right. <laughs> so it's, it all it all depends on how you look at it. So what you're telling me is that you're now sponsored by Gary's Meat Market. You know what? Might as well be. We've been, yeah. we've been giving we are giving them a whole lot of pub. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. Well. Uh, so Clayton France, um, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate the first ever match? In Memphis 901 FC history. Um, I think I give it an eight. You know, okay. I mean, a win definitely helps. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and let's just be honest. Losing on, a, losing on a penalty is not a fun way to lose, you know. It's not. Nope. Um, so, that's, so that's, you know, part of that. And then the other thing, too, would be I would have loved to – you know, as successful as I think Bluff City Mafia was, I think that there is definitely still some room for us to improve um, as far as the atmosphere goes and getting everything organized and stuff like that, such as not singing through the first few lines of the national anthem because you don't hear yeah. the PA announcer. Right. Well, you know. we have a plan in place. Home of the Brave. Yeah. Those are the key right. words. Home of the Brave. Right. We now ha- yeah, right. We now have a plan in place. To fix that. So I think that, you know, as a young supporters group, you learn, you learn doing these, you, you learn trial by fire kind of thing. Right. So we have Loud United this weekend, and it's definitely a chance for people who have heard about the team, heard about Bluff City Mafia, and wanted to come see a game or are now wanting to come see a game to get out there and hang out with us. And be part of, you know, the crazy atmosphere that we do. Yeah. Yeah, and that'll be good. Uh, 7 o'clock, AutoZone Park uh, versus uh, D.C. United Reserves. And uh, 
it'll be a uh, it'll be a fun festive it's supposed to be a beautiful night by the way yeah a beautiful night in downtown memphis so uh come it's on a little out. chilly wear a jacket a little chilly a little chilly might want to go for the long sleeves right but it's uh it's gonna be a good time good time will be had by all I uh Cl- clayton Francis also said, don't think loudness still announced 11 players yet that's true. They may be playing with a goalie and a couple of field players. Right. So, uh, okay. So you can be found at, at Bluff City Mafia and uh, all of the on all of the Twitters and whatnot. Uh, and uh, you can email Bluff City Mafia nine zero one at gmail dot com if you want to become a part of this phenomenon that is sweeping the nation. Yep. Yeah, we have, we have more we have more scarves and stuff coming in. We've already sold out on our first yeah. set of orders. Membership is um is, is, so all that's coming in. Membership's twenty five dollars. Yeah. It gets you a scarf, a sticker, priority seating at the game, and match the discounts to the brass store, um, which do go into effect yeah. on Saturday. A hundred and sixty official um, members, a hundred and sixty plus. A hundred and sixty eight okay. right now. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That was as of nice. like three o'clock this afternoon. So we're good. We're good. I mean, it's you know, it's exciting. I would like to be, you know, when we first did this, I ordered fifty scarves. Right. I thought that was all I was going to need. You know, it's not the case. So if we can get to two hundred, I think at this point, and we can end the season with two two fifty, oh, I think that would be a good number for us. Phenomenal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Clayton France, good to talk with you, sir. And uh, enjoy uh, in, enjoy these next, what, 48 hours, and then we'll be doing it all over again. That's right. That's right. I'm real excited to not yep. have a voice Sounds again good. for a whole week. Yeah. All, so, right. all right, Scotty. We'll talk soon, man. Appreciate it. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Make sure you come on out to the ballpark, 7 o'clock, Saturday night, March the 16th, 2019. Come on out early. Go to the brass door before the game. Go to the park early. Do the march. March from the brass door. That'll take place about 6.15. March from the brass door down the back alley and into AutoZone Park with the supporters group because it's fun. Uh, talk to other soccer-related people, chat, get to know the uh, the Memphis friends who also love this game. We're a part of the Beautiful Game Network, and we want to thank those guys for being a nationwide group of podcasters so that we get to experience the USL in a new and different way. And we appreciate Mike Sparks and all the all the good people, all the beautiful people at the Beautiful Game Network. That's going to wrap it up for now. I'm Scotty Smith saying thank you for listening to the 901 Soccer Podcast.